Use my slick and savvy shortcuts to add type to the inside of a selection outline. This video is available for both Photoshop Elements and Adobe Photoshop. This is the Elements version. When I created this card, I envisioned my sentiment following the curve of this cream colored paper. Here in Elements, you could do that with the Type on Custom Path tool, but that requires a very steady hand. Instead, let me show you how to do it using the Text on Selection tool with a few slick shortcuts. Begin in expert mode of Photoshop Elements by opening either the Quick Page or the Grayscale template that comes in the download for this video. Both of these documents include a curved clipping mask layer that extends all the way from one side of the document to the other. I'll be using the Quick Page to add curved type to this card. Press the letter D to reset the color chips to the default of black over white. And then the first thing you'll want to do is to get a selection outline. In the Layers panel, hold down the Control key in Windows or the Command key on a Mac and click on the thumbnail of the object you want the type to follow the shape of. On my Quick Page, I want the type to follow on top of the line of this curve. Therefore, I'll somehow need to select the top curve. On this quick page, the top curve is represented by the top paper layer. If I click on the visibility icon of that layer, you can see it turning on and off on the document. So holding down the control or command key, click on the thumbnail of that layer. If you're using the grayscale template, you would control or command click on the thumbnail of the top paper clipping mask layer. So now, the top portion of this quick page is selected. Next, you'll want to type a phrase, but this is where the slick and savvy shortcuts come in. First, get the text on selection tool. In the tool options, click on the add to selection icon and then open the font picker and choose a title font. I'm using O Wonder Sans. Set the size to around 20 points. The offset should be zero and the color chip should already be black. I've listed three other good choices for fonts in the manual. Also, it's a good idea to use all capital letters for this font. That will assure that none of the letters extend over the edge of the shape. Now, before we move on, there is something that you need to know about this text on selection tool. This tool will not type on the inside of a selection, only on the outside. So if I were to stay with a selection, my type would appear upside down. And remember, the goal is to type above the curve, not below it. Therefore, in this situation, I need to select what's below the curve, not what's above it. To do that, in the menu bar, choose Select Inverse. Now with this different selection, if I type on this selection, the words are going to be on the top of the selection outline and they'll be going in the right direction. Another thing you should know about this tool is that it requires a two part process. The first part is that it needs you to go through the process of selecting some pixels. We already have a selection outline, but we still need to go through the motions. In the Layers panel, the background layer should still be active. That's important because the tool needs to think that you're actually selecting pixels. Now on the document, click once inside the boundaries of our current selection outline. That will bring up a check mark to commit the change. Go ahead and click on that. And now your selection should have instantly turned into a path. The path is indicated by a very thin black line. That was the first part of the two-part process. The second part is to actually type on this path. When you type on a path, the place that you first put your cursor is where your word or words are going to start. So on this path, I am going to want to hover my cursor over the path near the left edge of the document. 
probably like a half an inch off the edge. And when you move your cursor over the path, you'll see the cursor turn into a type on a path icon. Click once to place the cursor. Now you can see that there is a type layer over here in the layers panel directly above the background layer. Before we start typing, however, we're going to want to move this layer to the top so that we can see our words appearing. So on the document, go ahead and click the check mark to commit. The type layer is still there in the layers panel. Click and drag that type layer above the top paper layer. Then to reactivate the cursor, double click on the thumbnail of the type layer. That will get the horizontal type tool and now you can type your word or phrase. I'll type happy birthday three times. If your phrase or words are too long, they're going to wrap around the outside of that type path. So keep an eye on that and I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. When you're finished typing your words, click the check mark to commit. And then to change anything you want about the type, again, get the horizontal type tool and in the tool options, you can alter the font, the size, or the tracking. I'll lower the size of my words just a little bit, and that will more center them on the document. If you adjust the tracking, that puts more or less space between each letter of the word. So a higher tracking will stretch out your type, and a lower tracking or a negative number will squish in the letters. I'll set the tracking of my phrase back to zero, and that looks good to me. The last thing to do is I want my phrase to be a little bit above the edge of that curve, not directly on it. So to move the phrase all together as one, get the move tool, and then use your keyboard arrow keys to slightly nudge the type up. And when I click on the background layer again to activate it, you can see how nice that looks on my birthday card. So that's how to secretly type on the inside of a selection outline in Photoshop Elements. If you'd like to learn more about what can be done with the type tool, I recommend checking out Secrets of Terrific Type by Jennifer Juris. You'll find a link to this class along with a discount coupon in the manual for this video. This has been Jen White with Digital Scrapper.